Welcome back everybody. We're on the jade hunt again. Going and looking at a place that we were at last time where I found kind of some whitish greenish jade and I'm going to go investigate that vein a little bit closer and kind of drive the ATV around adjacent areas and see if there's any other veins that I might have missed the first time. Not expecting any gem quality but I'm hoping I can find something that's carvable quality that's worth actually claiming and getting an excavator up there and mining. We'll see. Oh yeah, there's also some pegmatites up back here that I wanted to check out too. Crystals, who knows what's up there. Always worth looking into. We'll see how it goes. Let's hit it. I was out here looking for pegmatites and I found this. It's a little flake of jade. There's a little bit of apple green in there. Not quite apple green, but uh, bordering on some nice green. So uh, this is just laying out in the prairie. I'm going to kind of explore around up in the hills and see what I can find. See if we can find a source for this. That would be awesome. I stopped to take a look at this interesting piece of agate and uh, thankfully I did because I saw that other piece and then I saw that piece of jade right there. And uh, that's definitely got some nice green to it. So we're going to see if we can find this vein somewhere. It was on the ground here, so it had to have come from somewhere up there. Not sure where, so we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna grid back and forth and see if we can find a line of this stuff coming down. And if we find a line, then we'll just follow it straight up until it stops, and hopefully that'll be the source. Well, I found what looks to be a source, but this stuff is all uh, fairly low quality. Not fairly low, it's definitely low quality. So, uh, you can see where it's still in place in the rock there. We're gonna keep moving on. There's a big chunk of it. We're in the right place, we're just not finding the good stuff yet. Let's go find the good stuff. Well, I found an even bigger outcrop. This is all green, but uh, there's just no, no real translucency. And the way that I know that, I found uh, these two tools to be pretty useful. These are just uh, battery powered angle grinders and I put a uh, diamond disc on one and then a, I believe those are uh, discs for polishing granite countertops. And uh, you can just kind of cut an edge on any kind of sample with that diamond disc and then polish it down with the, uh, the granite polishing disc. And you can tell really quickly if this is worth chipping any rock off to take back. And uh, this one obviously isn't. This one doesn't look much better than just a wind polished uh, exterior face. But when you find some really nice jade, you'll be able to see the, the translucency right away when you polish it up with these two angle grinders. So while I still have my rock hammer, I found that these are two really useful items and they're small enough that they can fit just right in the back of my, uh, in the little saddlebags on my ATV. The trick is that you really need to get the good ones. Um, I bought a Ryobi one and it was just absolute trash. Uh, it, it would barely even run that polishing disc. But these Makitas, if you get a good 4 or 5 amp hour battery, uh, they'll run that, that diamond wheel almost as well as a corded angle grinder. So right down the hill from that first big vein I found, there's actually another vein. And uh, this stuff is a little bit higher quality, although it's still low quality. Not quite total junk, but... Um, it's too dark and it's obviously cracked, but there is some translucency. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera since that boulder is massive. But uh, if I put a flashlight up to that, there's some translucent translucency to it. Probably that one too, although I haven't cut into it. I thought it was interesting. You can see in the field, if you watched my first video on jade, where I showed you how it can uh, just look like a kind of rusty rock from the outside, that's a piece that I hammered off right there. And, uh, well, you can see if that was laying on the ground and you didn't see the rest of this, that's what it would look like. That's where that stuff comes from, that rust coating. So we're going to just kind of walk all around here and see if we can't find something that is really nice and translucent and really nice and bright green. That would be awesome. Now, in prospecting, it's sort of a rule of thumb that whatever you find in the cobbles down here has come from the mountains up there. But I wanted to show you an example where that's not always true. Now, if we take a look at this pediment here, uh, we can see these big boulders of granite, which are obviously coming off of this exposure up here. 
But as we look at more of the gravel on here, we can kind of see everything ranging from quartz to pieces of pegmatite to diorite to um, pieces of serpentine to even a piece of uh, really low quality jade. There's kind of everything up here. Yet, this is the only hill in the area. And I guarantee I've walked around and I've circumnavigated this entire hill, walked up and down it. And the only thing up there is granite. So what happened was, at one point, this mountain was way taller than it was. And it either eroded down, and what you're seeing on the ground right now is from when this mountain was way taller up here, or this entire mountain was faulted down. And what we're seeing here is a pediment derived from a portion of the mountain that is actually buried right now. So this can make prospecting a lot more difficult because in a lot of cases, the source for this material that we find is no longer existing or it's buried 5,000 feet underground due to faulting. So sometimes if you make a find off in these pediments, it might just be a one-off find and you'll never find the source because it just simply doesn't exist anymore. So in the first jade video I made, I showed you towards the end some whitish green jade that I had found. And this is the vein right here. It's actually quite extensive. It goes all the way up this hill. And uh, I just noticed that down here towards the bottom, there's actually a uh, piece of quartz. Is that focusing there? With green crystals in it. And uh, I'm not sure how all those greens show up on the camera, but... As I was looking closer, these are actually hexagonal forms. So I think this may be green tourmaline, although I'm not exactly sure. And uh, I'm going to try to knock this chunk out and take this stuff home to identify it. It seems to be associated with, uh, where is it, some of this stuff here. It's kind of like a green mica, but it's not, it's not fuchsite. And that green mica ends up grading further over into this, this other vein, uh, which is actually jade. So it's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting assemblage of minerals here. So I'm going to explore it a bit more. I didn't quite explore it enough the first time. Now this is a really interesting piece. Not just because it actually has quartz in it. This is jade. But if you look at the top here, these, let me see if my camera will focus in. These are remnant forms of the tremolite, or I guess probably actinolite, that this jade was, was uh, created from. And you can still see them distributed on the surface of this piece of jade. That is just really cool to me. I hope I can find some more of this. I don't know if this is showing up on the camera. I'm out here in broad daylight, but I got the flashlight on uh, one of these tremolite, or actinolite fibers. And... Uh, it's totally translucent and so I found the vein for that weird fibrous nephrite and uh, this is it right here and if you look closer I think I may have solved the mystery you can see a bunch of these what I thought were fibers in here and in fact it does look fairly fibrous over here but I don't think this is asbestiform um, I don't think it's tremolite or actinolite I think what this is is if you see it's associated with the quartz here, I think these are quartz crystals. You can see the hexagonal form, and that also explains the other mystery that I found further downhill, which is uh, that piece of quartz with the what I thought was green tourmaline on it. I bet what that is is some more of these crystals that were originally quartz crystals, and they're now what are called pseudomorphs. They started off as quartz, and... Uh, they got nephritized. They got turned into nephrite. So it's a metamorphic form of quartz, I guess you could say. It's a pseudomorph. And I think that's what's happening here is we're seeing what used to be a little pocket of quartz crystals that got turned into nephrite. And I've seen this in a couple other places as I started walking around, and that's what made me think about it. I've seen where the quartz literally graded slowly into nephrite, and at first I thought it might have been barrel, but it isn't. It's too soft to be barrel. And there's another place, or there's another couple places, where there's actually just discrete pieces 
of nephrite in the quartz itself. And it's all the exact same color as that stuff that I saw further down the hill. So I think that's what's happening here is we're getting quartz pseudomorphs uh, of nephrite. Pretty cool if you ask me. I'm gonna bring this into a geologist to try to verify the theory, but I think that's what's happening. The nephritized quartz connection got me thinking. I was wondering if that white and green massive vein of nephrite that I found right below where all those quartz crystals that had been nephritized, I was wondering if that might have been quartz the entire vein maybe to begin with. And uh, sure enough, as I walked up, there's about a thousand foot long quartz vein that ends right at that big outcrop. And then it continues on over the hill. So it sure seems like that little section well, the entire thing was a quartz vein at one point, and then that little section was nephritized. And then that got me thinking further about, I don't know if uh, you saw my first video on jade, but I showed some green crystals that I said were probably just green quartz. Well, I decided to revisit that location. So the spot where I found these is actually a little place where somebody had been mining what is likely called tulite. Now let me walk you around the corner here. So this is where I found what I thought was the green quartz. And uh, someone had been digging here. And you can see this is definitely quartz. And it bisects or just kind of ends right into this uh, nephrite or tulite vein. And within this vein, this quartz vein has intruded. And it's hard to tell what came first, but it's almost like this quartz came first and then was nephritized which is weird. I'm not sure the mechanics of how that actually works because there is no asbestiform material in quartz. However, and that was what confused me, at my first location where I had the white jade and the, the uh, quartz nephrite pseudomorphs, but at this location, as I looked at it closer, I started digging around here and I don't really want to, I'll show you why I don't want to dig around here too much. There's actually zoom in on that there there's actually asbestos in this vein and uh, here i'll i'll break some of this apart so you can see the fibrous nature of it you just you don't want to breathe that stuff but you can see that this this quartz has been altered and i'm pretty sure it's been for lack of a better term nephritized turned into nephrite, but I really have no way of proving this. I wish the college had a thin section machine or, uh, you know, something like an XRF machine or some sort of spectrometer. So if there's any geologists out there or chemical engineers or anyone with uh, the ability to maybe identify some of this stuff and confirm or deny my theory that this is actually quartz that's been turned into nephrite, well, I'm not sure that that's technically possible I think it'd be interesting to to see if that's what's happening here or not. So let me know if anyone has the ability to do that. Send me a message, usminer at usminer.com. Just for an idea of what some of this looks like, this uh, you can even see that this was smoky quartz at one point. On this end, it's still smoky, and on that end, it's green. Uh, these ones are, are fairly green. Unfortunately, this green is just not really saturated. It's not very vivid. This would be some really cool stuff if this was apple green or imperial green. Okay, everyone, I think that's it for today. It's always fun coming up with a new theory. It's kind of like the Earth is a mystery novel and each mountain is a different chapter. And we're the readers. As prospectors, geologists, rock hounds, we're just coming out here trying to solve the mystery that the Earth wrote for us. And I freaking love it. Thanks for coming along. See you next time. I just wanted to take a moment to share some jade that a viewer has shared with me and he's been finding on his own up in Canada. I think it's great that people are getting out there into the field and making finds. And I, I mean, this is some good quality stuff. At least it's a lot better than what I've found so far. And uh, yeah, great job, man. And it sounds like he's making some money doing it too, which really is the dream. So prospecting and exploring 
is my passion. And if there's others out there doing the same thing and wanting help with some exposure for maybe their channel or just want to show the things that they're finding, drop me a line and maybe I can help. Uh, I know when I started, everyone was at least two generations older than I am. And it was hard finding help or advice outside a few rare individuals who kindly extended a hand to me. So I hope I can help get, uh, you know, a little bit younger generations out there in the field now since I know it's hard to get started. Okay, see you all next time. Later.